We're back here live at the Fluent Conference. This is Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage with theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co host, Jeff Frick, and we're here with Jake Spurlock, the author of Bootstrap, the book on how to get up and running. And, and, and these new programming languages are a big part of uh, the conference here, get, do giving more tools to the developers, tooling, general platform services, and just other techniques. Uh, and uh, our first ever. Cube guests that were wearing Google Glass. <laughs> Jake, you are our first milestone. This is our fourth season with theCUBE. Yeah. We've interviewed thousands of executives, <laughs> developers, entrepreneurs, and you are the first to have the Google Glass on, and uh, I'm proud to say that I gave mine to my high school senior who's loving <laughs> it. Uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, glad to be here. Um, so first, the Google Glass, what's your take on it before we get to talk about the bootstrap? You know what I, I think it's totally sci-fi. Like it's it's bona fide science fiction, and it's it it does some really cool things right now. But the thing that I think about it is it's 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 going to allow so many things in the future. You know, I'm I'm totally sold on it. Like yeah. I, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I am too. I think for all the people who don't understand it, thinks it looks goofy. It's the future. It is. And I told my son when I gave it to him, I said, "Son, before I give you this, which is coolest thing you've ever seen, <laughs> I want you to go to Google and I want you to search Apple One." And he did, and he looked at Apple One, and it was basically wood, yeah. and it was a circuit board. I go, isn't that elegant? That is not what the Mac looks like today. Look how far it's come. And to me, Google Glass represents that future of what is possible. And personally, your phone will be your base station for your life. Your Fitbit will connect it. It'll connect all your personal devices, wearable computer, augmented reality, a software developer's dream. And really, everything. I mean, wearables, this, and even though Tim Cook was kind of down on it because he's not as far as along as Google, in my opinion, but that's my commentary. Um, but that really kind of ties us into the show here, right? So Fluent has evolved from JavaScript which is, you know, we all know what JavaScript has done and is doing in the front end for web experiences, but now the user experience and user expectations evolving to sci-fi with glass and everything in between, real time, server side, edge, multiple responsive design, agile, mobile, these things are, com are coming together and it's serious software engineering combined with rapid development. Totally. So Absolutely. what's, do you agree with all that and what's your take on it? No, I totally agree with it. Um, you know, to your point, like, I work for Make Magazine, and Make Magazine is all about making things. And I think that that really kind of aligns with what Google Glass is. It allows you to like the, this wearable computing. I think is a is a it's kind of this brave new world. Like you know, when when we when we can quantify things, when you can quantify like how many steps you take in a day, um, who you're meeting at a conference, what you're you know like you know even taking pictures is just kind of a it's this primary thing, like everything should be able to take a picture so you can document your, and you know, add history to, you know, to your own personal history. And I think that's, that's a really powerful thing. So Jake, that's, that's interesting and we want to talk about the future, but the real question everybody wants to know in the audience, at least I always do when a new <laughs> O'Reilly book comes out, is how did you pick the horse? Well, what, what's the process for the animals on show, the, uh, the, on, the o, on the O'Reilly books? The, uh, the crazy thing about it is I had really no say in it, and <laughs> it just kind of showed up. I actually, I signed all the contracts and everything for the book, and about, like, literally three weeks into the process, I had maybe two pages written, I got, I got an email saying, here's your cover. And I was like, wow, a horse, you know, like, that's a cool animal. So, I was thinking it'd be kind of funny if it was like, like I, I kind of like bears. I think bears are cool. So it's like really cool if it was a bear book, you know, or like really funny if it was like some kind of farm animal, like a chicken or you know, like an ass, you know, like something just kind of stupid. I don't know if you want the ass on there, but uh, or as my <laughs> well, my, my boss used to say, the south end of a of a horse going north. But um. <laughs> but then it was a horse, and I was like, that's totally cool. Like and I, and it's it says in the the back of the book the colophon, it's the thin horse, which is a horse that was bred in Finland for to be a good like general all-purpose horse, like a racing horse, a farm horse, and I think that's kind of that's kind of what Bootstrap is. It can be a it can be a, an application that fits many different needs, whether like you're doing application development or like 
blogs or you know admin interfaces or different things like that. Bootstrap Center. So talk about Bootstrap for the folks out there. Just give a quick uh, overview of the of the of the of the pro of the product and the, and the book sure. itself and the objective. I mean, because Dave Weiner wrote the intro and Dave's well respected with scripting.com, yep. been a legend, um, you know, and a, and a pundit and, and a developer. And he always he builds a lot of prototypes. Yeah. And, you know. And he, and Dave's been criticized for not building stuff that doesn't scale, but that again, yeah. you know, that's not really what he does. He's a tinkerer. He loves totally. to build, yeah. and he builds he builds a lot of great stuff and builds good stuff all the time. So, a lot of the creativity comes from this prototyping. So, why Bootstrap, and what's the different approach? So the the Bootstrap is actually a product that came out of Twitter. Um, uh, the Twitter engineers they have all of these different products and platforms, and they found that you know like web development 101 when you start a new project, there's a lot of groundwork that has to be done. You know, writing what forms look like, what tables look like, creating a grid system, dealing with typography and things like that. And so I said, we need to find a way to like standardize our internal tool set. Like, this is what a Twitter website should look like. And so as they standardize their tools across all these different Twitter, like internal Twitter sites and some of their external stuff, they found that they were building a platform that in theory was bigger than Twitter. It was, this is a platform that could be I've used for, I mean, everybody starts on a project like that. So they created the code and then they open sourced it, they put it up on GitHub, and it's since actually become, it's the most popular project on GitHub. It's got more stars, it's been forked more times, and it's become a, it's become a foundation for you know, thousands of websites across the internet. And it's cool because it's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and so as such it can be you know, add it to any other platform. Like, oh, you have a WordPress site? Well, Bootstrap would be a good fit for it. You have a, you know, a Rails app that you're building? Great. And the, the cool thing about it, too, is at its core, it's, a, it's based on a responsive framework. So out of the box, you have, you know, smartphone and tablet and even widescreen support for building different applications in different things. So, like, you look at a guy like Dave Weiner who likes to tinker. Like, Dave has an idea, like, well, I want to build some kind of new outlining tool. I don't want to spend time like building the front end. I just want to build the tool, the the core technology behind it, and you know, and then I can just toss Bootstrap on top of it to start laying out the application. For yeah, it. I mean, it's great. For, I mean, it's great for creativity. Why, yeah. you know, people get caught in doing the right coding, <coughs> the process of coding. Yeah. Their creativity is kind of impinged by that. So here, it's a good yeah. creative process totally. for those developers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got to ask you about the Maker Fair. Obviously, you're involved in a lot of cool things across the board, from honestly writing the book and, and being on the coding side and prototyping, but also, you know, tinkering and building kind of, you know, weird and cool stuff, yeah. right? The future. And uh, so I got to ask you, what's the coolest thing you've seen this year at Maker Fair? At Maker Fair? Yeah. Oh man, it's tough. It's it's <laughs> it's cool because, you know, I I work as a web developer for Maker Media, and so I, I kind of look at a lot of the guts of like our websites and stuff like that. So like. I find myself like refreshing the exact same page to make sure lay layouts and everything work. But it was just so cool to see so many like actually get to the fair and see all of the different um, exhibits and presentations and things like that. One of my favorite things, it's, it's kind of an old school thing, it's not electronics or anything, but it's this group of guys actually up in Santa Rosa. It's the Fun Bike Unicorn Club. And, One uh, more time, the Fun, fun Bike, bike unicorn, unicorn Club. club. <laughs> fun Bike Unicorn All right. Club. Okay. And, uh, or F Buck, as they <laughs> go by. But they built, my, it's my favorite thing at, at Maker Fair. They were there last year and then this year again. But they have a thing called the Whiskey Drome. And the Whiskey Drome is, in essence, a, a whiskey barrel that's about 20 feet in diameter and about 5 feet high. Um, and what they do is they ride their bikes around on the inside of it. So like old school carnival style, like like inside the cage with yeah, the motorcycles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's guys on this uh, bike and the whiskey drum, you know, just totally wild. on bicycles or on motorcycles. Bicycles. Yeah, on bicycles. Wow, they must go really fast. I don't they know, go that's pretty a lot quick. Of, a lot of horsepower. It's a lot of fun. So I don't know. I, I just think this whole this whole thing with bootstrap and coming out of Twitter and this 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 kind of. Uh, mix up of, if you will of you know you start your software company you use open source tools and you build a really cool commercial product and then you say wow i actually have more than than the application that we built we actually have some platform stuff that other people want and then you put that back out into the open source totally. community and watch it watch it grow you know, again Jeff, we've seen, you know we cover a lot of thing. different events this is kind of a cool developer event where you can see this in some of the cool coding and the engineering software engineering side of it we've got a lot of infrastructure events a lot of event, big vendor and the yeah. enterprise side events and you know, if you look at all the most killer stuff happening right now that's decimating the landscape of incumbent vendors is come from the hyperscale market. So mm -hmm. you saw, you know, Facebook, Google, you see Hadoop, you see, you know, uh, Google file system. You know, these open source projects are dro were dr has have driven because no one else, there's nothing around. Yeah. Commercial off the shelf software 
has really uh, hasn't evolved for this hyperscale market or this yeah. or some people call it web scale, but you know I call it hyperscale. You know, Twitter is a great example. So you know I'm sure I'm sure they're sitting around saying we got to build better stuff yeah. because we can't be reinventing libraries and reusing code and or there's licensing issues. Are you seeing the same thing? And and w does that book relate to some of those stories when you were researching it? Uh, yeah, you know a little bit. The, my book's more of a pragmatic approach to actually how to use Bootstrap and things like that. But I, I totally concur and like. You know, we see great tools. We use a lot of like internal tools that Twitter has built and that Google has built. Now that they've open source, we can find them and use them. We we like to use Bower, which is a package manager that was developed over at Twitter and was actually mentioned in the keynote today as one of the great like it's a package installer for the web. You know, so where back in the day you would have something you know, um, uh, you know like apt or something like that on you know for doing package installations for Linux, but now it's like you know, most people are on a Mac or they're on a PC, you know, doing web development and they want a similar development experience. And so they can use open source tools from Twitter and from Google and others. To so we that. had a tweet that came in to, uh, to we asked um, uh, uh, Peter the same thing. Hey, Fluent Conference, that's you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, us. Uh, but you're a really good one to answer this question. Anyone care to argue the, that responsive web design and agile design development can play together? I ain't buying it. Some commentary <laughs> coming in, totally depends on who the designer is. So again, it brings up this notion of um, you know what responsive web design is, which you're used to seeing a lot, mm -hmm. about refreshing pages. Mm -hmm. And agile is really more of a methodology, right? Yeah. So, so talk about that dichotomy to the question, and then try to compare and contrast the difference between web and mobile because that's a big debate right now. Can you apply agile techniques to mobile? And we've, I've seen some companies, won't say their names, fail by pushing too many updates yeah. during the tire kicking phase of a mobile app. Yeah. Where web, you can push all day long over the sure, weekend. Yeah. So can you comment on the responsiveness versus agile? Can they play well together? And two, how does mobile play into all this? Sure, like, and I, I don't know if I'm the best person to talk about agile development because we're not <laughs> the best uh, I'm not the best uh, well the concept that. I mean but, it's a but, concept but like we we take agile development and we say like for our mobile you know for our web apps and say like we, we're, we're in the constantly deploy mode that's how we work at make and so like we have 10 deploys a day or so you know so I like to think that we're agile in the sense that we're constantly pushing new code um, to our code base that's yeah. live um, and with that like I mean can responsive play well with that? Like, you know, re responsive is just a, it's just an endpoint. Like, if your goal in the beginning was to say, like, well, this is this responsive website that we want to build, or this responsive web app, or something like that, you can be doing that and have it be agile at the same time. It's just, it's just what you're building to. Right? So, so, so it. talk a little bit about the kind of the citizen developer, and, and as these tools mature and they're using open source, and more and more of kind of the setup and the, and kind of the pain in the butt stuff to get going is taking care of in, in bulk. Yeah. I mean, are you seeing the rise of citizen developer? Are, are more people now who don't, you know, kind of come from that traditional background getting into, and is yeah. this a great thing? I, I, I think so. Like, I mean, I, I started out, I guess, as a citizen developer saying, you know, like, I've never worked for, like, the big enterprise development, you know, environment. Like, in fact, at Make, we just hired a couple more developers, and I'm like, wow, I have to work with a team now, and it's not just going to be me. That'll be interesting, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Like, and and that, and I think that that's interesting, you know. Like, I think that the tools, like, I mean, as Make, you know, we, you know, we do millions and millions of page views every month, and for you know, two years now, it's just been me. And I think that anybody can be a web developer, and anybody can has access to Amazon Web Services, or, you know, like you know, huge blogging platforms that make it easy to develop large sites that can hit millions of people without, you know, like an IT department and without like sysadmins and things like that. So, you know, I, I think that there, the future is unlimited. The, the future is unlimited. And you can have yeah. Google Glass. You can have Google Glass even, <laughs> and you can automate all kinds of stuff. So, so if you've been recording this whole thing on the Google Glass, no. that's what I got to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a funny story to tell about Google Glass though, real quick. So. We're, this is the Hilton Hotel that we're staying in and where the conference is. And I went to check in last night and the girl at the front desk said, it was that Google Glass. I said, yeah, and she was kind of starstruck. It was kind of funny. And she's like, are you recording me right now? And I'm like, no, no, of course not. You know, like, that'd be poor form. <laughs> and, and, and Does it have her, a little red light, though? Is no, there any no uh, external light. indicator? You can see if it's lit up, though. <laughs> and so I said, you know, I think it's kind of funny. I wonder if I get better customer service when people know that I have Google Glass yeah. because they're wondering if 
you know, it's like, uh, is he recording me? Is this going to go it, my boss? Integrated with Yelp. If your head's going yeah. up, it automatically gives more stars. <laughs> my, and if my, your head's my, going My son's sideways, first video, he, he wanted to have a little boxing match. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll teach you a life lesson. And he posted it because he can share it right to Google+. Plus. Uh -huh. Thank God he doesn't have a lot of people on Google+. Plus. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tripped over the uh, sleeping bag in his room, which he claims that that was not there. Uh -huh. But he gets his hands up like in COD. Uh -huh. And he, like, so it's funny. His first gesture in glass is first-person shooter, right? Right, and, right. which is what he knows. He's right? 18, so I mean, yeah, so that's that, what he knows. Very interesting. He starts chasing with the chainsaw. Then to to your point about this <laughs> augmented reality, and and so I've been watching him and introduced to his friends, and every, every single person in his peer group. This is, these aren't just geeks either. He's like, you know, his uh, athlete uh, athlete friends and his geek friends. They're all they all love it. They're all like, wow. They're all like very, very intrigued by it and provoc it's very provocative. So, uh, so I got upgraded to a, a suite on the 18th floor corner. It was nice. I guess there are some perks. <laughs> oh, that's the end of the story. Yeah, that's so the there the story. you go. Go out and get Google Glass and you too can get it upgraded to the suite on okay, the corner. Okay, well, that's um, great. The right. book is Bootstrap, and it's available on O'Reilly Media Bookstore, and then they can buy it on the website, Amazon, and Amazon all, over. all over. Get it if you're prototyping and you're creative. This is what you want to use. Um, again, it's an easy read. Jake Spurlock, web Lots developer. Of so bring it down to the hill <laughs> in the developer. next few days. Jake will sign it for you. Web developer at Maker Glass. Media, Maker Fair. He's supposed to a lot of things. So built by Twitter. So again, good track record, great concept. This is the Cube. At O'Reilly Fluent Conference, tweet us at hashtag Fluent Conference at Furrier, F U R R I E R. Have any questions? Watch all day long. We are bringing live exclusive coverage, the Q from Silicon Angle here at O'Reilly Media's Fluent Conference today and tomorrow. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.